Hello. <laughs> Say that in English. Um, my name's Darren, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm married to Rex Short, and together we have four children. We have Josie, who just turned 17. We've got Paul, who's 15. We've got Elijah, who's 13. And this is Naomi, who's 11. She's our youngest. And yeah, so um, I feel really privileged to just share some of my story with you. And uh, thanks, Robin. I can relate to a lot of what you said. Um, yeah, I grew up in Rarapiko, and that's, you know, if you're not from here, well, most of you probably are, half an hour out of New Plymouth. Um, I was born in Stratford. My dad is, was a dairy farmer. My mother was a school teacher, a primary school teacher. We used to go to church um, in, in Inglewood, in the Anglican church. And then at about the age of seven, my dad left church. And he, um, for whatever reason, we stopped going. But sometimes I'd go with my auntie. Um, yeah, and there was two things that I caught from church early on in those first years. And one was just like the holiness of God. You know, you can't help walk into a traditional church with this beautiful stained glass and my mum actually used to play the organ, and so she, we would get there a bit early, so we were just little kids, and we'd run around the church and get up into the, you know, by the altar, and the minister would be lighting the candle. So sort of the aesthetics of church, you know, and that holiness of God. The other thing that really um, impacted me was at the back of church was a wooden box, and it had the letters VSA, Voluntary service abroad, and that fascinated me. And I loved, like we used to have to walk out the door of church and shake the minister's hand, and you, <laughs> you had to um, walk past that box. And it was just like, you know, to me it was really big. And I just always like, wow, that's that's overseas, and that really touched me. Um, so, yeah. So what else was I going to say about that? It's about it. Um, <laughs> so. When I was young, there was another really impacting thing, and there was a movie on a Sunday afternoon on our little black and white TV. Probably there was only two channels. <laughs> Back then, I think there only was two channels. And it was a movie called The Inn of the Sixth Happiness. Wow. Yeah, starring Ingrid Bergman. <laughs> and it was the story of Gladys Aylward, and I know a lot of you will know Gladys Aylward's story. So I'm about eight years old probably watching this movie, and I'm just gobsmacked, you know, and because um, Gladys, you know, she was a British maid. She was probably about 26, I think, when God really clearly called her to go to China. And she was just a classic example of someone who said, God, use me, you know. God, where do you want me to go? And I'm available. You know, she was so just that. And like you say, Robin, you know, I'm not saying you haven't got any qualifications, but Gladys Alwood had no qualifications in the eyes of the missionary society, and they wouldn't send her. So, you know the story, she got to go anyway, um, and that cliche, you know, where God guides, he provides. It's so true. And so she paid off her train ticket, you know, and she went across the Trans-Siberian, and it was in wartime, and she's sitting in the carriage with these women, Russian Soldiers, you know, it's all very dramatic. So to an eight-year-old, it's like, wow, you know. And I remember going to primary school the next day and going, let's play missionaries. <laughs> and all the kids are like, what? <laughs> I don't think they'd watch the movie. <laughs> but I think that next week we played Gladys Aylward, <laughs> and like she, she became the foot inspector for the Chinese. You know, like the woman who had their feet bound, and she was part of helping unwrap these baby's feet, you know, it's sh so shocking that they did that, and she also um, rescued these orphans, so so God put, you know, put that away in my heart, then at about the age of 13, my sister came back from university, I was one of four girls, we were actually nine girls on the same farm, because we were cousins and two brothers ran the farm, um, so she came back from university and she brought this thesis home, I didn't even know what a thesis was, but and it was about that she hadn't written it, but she said, you've got to read this, read this. And it was about how women were horribly oppressed by the church. And it was just like, it was so horrible, you know, um, the traditional church, you know, women are, blah, 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 you know, all this. And I read it cover to cover. 
And I, I made an innover, and I didn't actually even have a word for it. Sue, Sue preached on it that last time she was here about innovers. I made an innover that I never wanted to be a woman in church like that, and probably I vowed that I wouldn't be a Christian either. It was that impacting. So from the age of 13 to 30, I was in a void. I totally um, rejected Christ. Um, I knew who Jesus was as a child. <coughs> And I used to pray, and you know, I was quite religious about praying for my mum, dad, and the sisters, and the cats, and the dogs, and the cows. <laughs> but yeah, I just totally wasn't a void for that long. And but then God got me at the age of thirty on my knees, nowhere else to go. It's like, oh God, do I have to be a Christian? You know, it was really like that. <laughs> and so yeah, um, I it was like that seed that had been planted so long ago just came alive again. And I got my mission's heart back. And, and there you go. Um, so it was about that age. I was, I was at that place. It's like, God, use me. God, where do you want me? I was like, I could go anywhere at this point. I had no attachments to anything. Um, God, I'm available. And, and it was at that time, so I thought I'd do early childhood training because my actual goal for that was orphanages. If I could train an early childhood, my mum was a teacher, <laughs> I'd watched her, um, I could maybe use that, you know, overseas. And so I remember at work one day, I was emptying the rubbish and I lifted the lid on the rubbish bin and inside was this map. And I love maps. And I was like, oh, what's this? It was like a ripped up National Geographic. And it was um, Eastern Europe. It was a perfect map of Eastern Europe. I dusted off the nappies or was around it, took it home and stuck it on my wall. And so it was like saying, you know, God, do you think you could use me there? You know, and so I did my training. I didn't actually finish my training because I met Rex. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> We started our own child care centre. And in the meanwhile, in the meanwhile he had, um, God was talking to him about missions. I hadn't met him at that point. And he, had, he was training to be a mechanic, and he had a picture of mercy ships, wow. which is youth with a mission. And, you know, the mercy ships can go into places um, that you can't get to over land. You can take a ship and anchor offshore, you know, and go in on small boats to islands and places that you just can't get to on land. Anyway, so he had this letter, so he had a picture of mercy ships on his toolbox. <laughs> so God must be looking at us. <laughs> so, oh, I think I could put these two together. So, yeah, long story cut short, we were, we both did both. We both went on mercy ships and we both, uh, we got married, we both went to Romania. And... Um, like, yeah, you just go with what you have. I mean, I wasn't highly skilled in anything, but it's the attitude of, God, use me. Please, would you use me? I'm available. <laughs> We're available. What, where do you want us to go? And sort of like Gladys Aylwood, she, she just knew she had to be there. It wasn't that she even had it all worked out. It was just the fact that she'd even put her foot on China. Then the doors opened. And that was the same for us in Romania. We had one contact in Bucharest in and that was it. Our foot was on the land, and we were, it's like, okay, God, now what? And the doors just open. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and where God guides, he provides. Mm -hmm. And now, um, so we're in Romania, and we get led to go to Scotland. So we do um, a leadership course in the Scotland Seamill Centre <laughs> with YWAM again. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that they want us to lead a, a, school, um, a group back to to Romania and Bulgaria and we're so excited because we've just come from there and we sort of had contacts and everything and so we led this team back and um, I love how a team can work because when some are down the others are up you know and we've got so many skills even if you don't think you've got any skills between you you've got so many skills and so we had you know music we had drama we had just plain serving we had um, and I want to tell you about Sarah Sarah was a girl on our team, and she was, she had a really amazing ministry, and she would tell a story, like, so we'd be doing crafts, we'd be doing sports or drama or just anything with the kids in the orphanages, and Sarah, and we'd always go, come on, Sarah, do your thing, you know, <laughs> so she would gather the kids around her, and she would just start to tell her story through a translator. And she would start something like this. 
Um, once upon a time, it was a really cold night. And the wind was blowing and the snow was starting to fall. And it was dark. And a shadowy person came in the dark and left um, a tattered box at the door of, of the inner city hospital. And covering the, the box was a very tattered blanket. And in there was a little baby. And, and a nurse was coming on shift to this hospital in the middle of the city. And, and she saw this little arms, you know, and she'd go on like this and she'd explain this whole story of this little baby. And, and the punchline of her story was, that baby was me. And it was just like, oh, oh, it would just get us every time. Like, oh, you, I knew, you knew it was coming because she did it so often. It's like, whoa. <laughs> You know, God just totally used her and her life to now be ministering to orphans. It was so cool. And um, anyway, so we got back to Scotland. I led the team and had lots of crazy adventures, and <laughs> including mountains that were falling apart. And we'd been driving on these crazy roads, and suddenly there was no road, but this big gaping hole with rushing crazy floodwaters. And we're going, oh, we were driving on that yesterday. <laughs> And just the fun of being in a team, I think, is really um, the exciting part for me about you know, missions. So anyway, so I just want to finish with um, telling you, and I really know that God, where God guides, he provides. And we've seen it over and over and over again. And so we're back in Scotland, and we see through all the airfares that we've needed and everything that we're actually in debt to $3,000. Now, all the youth with a mission bases are running by faith. Totally. <laughs> and they're really kind to us and they say, oh, it's okay, we know that you'll pay us back. So we have to go because our visas have run out. Come home to New Zealand, we're like, oh, we're in debt three grand, you know. And it seems like never can we pay that off. And so um, Josie's coming by now, you know. <laughs> and so it's like we have to stay put. And, you know, sometimes our plans aren't his plans, right? You know, <laughs> we would have lived... Love to just pay the debt and keep travelling and doing that thing, but God brought us home, you know, for more than one reason. I had a baby in New Zealand. She's got a New Zealand passport now. <laughs> and actually, I forgot to say, she's in India right now. She's um, at the orphanage, yeah, and they're doing really well. So she's there for three months. Well, anyway, so we're in debt three grand. We're going, God, did we not hear you? You know, did we not hear you right? Why, you know? <laughs> we, we you guide, you provide, what's happening? And we get this scripture, and it's a story from two kings, and it's the story of the woman, the widow. She's just lost her husband. She's in the part of the company of prophets, so she's saying, Elisha, you know, help. This creditor is coming to take my two sons. He's, he's going to take him and sell him for slaves, you know, this poor lady. And Elisha says, well, what have you got in your house? And she's going, I haven't got anything. And I think we often feel like that, right? We haven't got any skills. We haven't got anything. But then she says, I've got some oil. <laughs> I've got some oil. And, she, and so he says, go and get. Go, this is actually the key. Go and ask your neighbours. Go and ask your neighbours for empty jars. And so they go and ask the neighbours for empty jars. And Elisha says, Pour the oil, more jars coming, pour the oil, more jars full, 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 you know. And then um, there's no more jars coming in and the oil stops and Elisha says, go and pay your debts, you're free. Well, for us, that translated <laughs> into, okay, so we had this old washing machine <laughs> and it was broken. Rex is mechanical and he happened to notice that someone else had a matching washing machine and so he's thinking, ah, oh, I'll ask him for the washing machine. What are you doing with your washing machine? Oh, we don't want it. We're taking it to the dump. So he gets that washing machine, makes one out of two. We sell the washing machine. <laughs> we have a go and ask your neighbours for broken washing machines thing happening. And so we do, and we're making, like, money. And then we, get, we twig onto the thing of, um, oh, there's all these broken nifty fifties in people's backyards. I know this is crazy, but then it was like, go ask your neighbours for the broken nifty fifties. And we would get, you know, a cheap deal, or, oh, that's my son's and he's gone and I just want it off my place. Then it progressed to cars. <laughs> so I was like, 
go and ask your neighbours for broken cars. And so we're getting quite good at this by now. And then by then we're driving around in a $3,000 car and we know that this car, we, we're going to sell this car. And we actually go to this family camp. Uh, it's a youth with a mission again. They've been a big um, part of our missions thing. And so we go to this camp and we're so determined to sell this car. And we just know it's just right on the horizon of getting free of this debt. And um, there's this sharing time with the camp, it's uh, hundreds of people at this camp, and you know, the people are saying the, what you're supposed to be saying is, what are your expectations of this camp? And you know, people are getting up and saying, oh you know I just want to <laughs> just want to chill out, and I just want to hear God <laughs> and then Rex gets up and he says well I want to sell my car <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's just so funny, and then when we, we get to lunch that day and I'm, I just really feel like God's like saying, sit here. You know, so we sit at this table and there's no one there. And then this couple come up to us and they say, you know, introduce each other. And it's like they're saying, who was that person that wanted to sell the car? We really want to buy a car. <laughs> and we sold the car. And we got out of debt. And then we were in that, we felt like we were in that place to say, God, where do you want us? We're available again. We're free. We're free to go. So... I don't know, I hope that's, that's even awesome. encouraging to anyone. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for listening.